Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're going to go through 10 more questions off the ASVAB. In particular, we're going to be looking at the arithmetic reasoning portion of this test. So kind of like the math word problems. Remember, if you want to keep checking out practice for the ASVAB or other standardized tests, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. And if you're finding this content helpful, go ahead and hit the like button to let me know. With that, let's go ahead and dive right back into the questions. For 21, we're essentially saying, hey, if there's 12 cc's for 100 pounds, how much would you use for 175 pounds? So we can look at this as a fraction of saying 12 over 100 is equal to x over 175, cross multiply and divide. Or we could just say 12 over 100 is the same thing as 0.12, and we're multiplying that by 175. I am going to multiply this the long way since we don't have a calculator. 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 7 times 2 is 14, plus that 1 is 15, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 with the one would give us 30, 350. Bring down to zero to start, then we got five, seven, one. Now we need to add down, so zero, five, five, carry the one would give us a zero there as well. Seven, three would be 10, plus that is 11, carry the one, and we got two. Move the decimal over place twice because of that, meaning our final answer is 21, C. So a hiker walks 40 miles on the first day and then half of that every day after for five days. On average, how many did he walk each day? Well, let's first off find out his total mileage and then we'll divide that by five. So first day is 40, second day is half of that, so 20, half of that, which would be 10, half of that, which would be five, and half of that, which would be 2.5. If I add all of that up, I get 77.5. Now we need to divide that by five. Well, looking at my answers here, I know that that has to be larger than 10 because that would be 50, and it has to be smaller than 20 because that would be 100. It's right in the middle, so this is 15.5. All right, so really 23 is just a measure of how quick you are with mental math. It says here that they're driving for three hours at 32 miles per hour and then 4.5 at 72 miles per hour. And they want to know what the overall average speed is for this trip. Well, when I'm looking at this, I need to first off start off by finding our total mileage. So I'm going to do three times the 32, which is going to give me 96. I'm also going to do 4.5 times the 72, which is going to give me 324. If I add the two of those together, that gives me 420, which is our total overall traveled amount. So that means we need to divide that by the total amount of time we have here. Well, 3 plus 4.5 is 7.5, so I'm going to divide this by 7.5, and that ends up being 56 even, which is C. All right, another averages question. Well, it says that they pay $80 a month for seven of the months and 20 for the rest of the year. So what's the overall average for each month? Well, first off, let's find out the total amount of money spent. 80 times 7 is going to be 8 times 7, which is 56. And then add that zero on for the 80. And then 20 times the rest of the year. Well, 7 out of 12 means that we have 5 left. So 5 times 20 is going to give me another 100. That means for the whole year, it was $660. Now we have to divide that by 12. Well, I know that half of 1,200 is 600, so that would be 12 times 100. So half of that would be 50. Now I still have another 60 here, and I know that 12 would go into 65 times. So that means it would be 55, which is going to be answer C. Okay, so for 25, Jason is equal to six times the age of Kate. And then it says in two years, so Jason's age plus two is going to be equal to twice as much as Kate, but Kate is also going to be two years older at that point. This is a system of the equation, so let's solve by substitution. I'm going to take this 6K and plug it in for J. So we have 6K plus 2 is equal to, let's just distribute this guy through, so 2K plus 4. Now I need to solve for k, get it by itself. I'm going to do that by subtracting 2k from both sides. That way it's going to get rid of that 2k. And I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides to get that 2 over to the other side. So that's going to be 6 minus the 2, which is 4k. That's going to cancel. That's going to cancel. And 4 minus 2 is going to just be 2. Now I have to divide both sides by 4 to get k by itself. And that's going to give me that k is equal to 1 half. Well, Jason's 6 times that, so 1 half times 6 is 3. Answer A. So 26 wants us to find the average phone bill for three months. If this is the long distance for the first, the second, the third, and also they have to pay a local phone bill of $18 each month. So here's the deal. We're actually going to deal with that 18 at the very end because it's 18 every time. So we can just add that to our final average to get our final answer. So the first thing we want to do is just add these three together, 10330, 7160, and $84. When I add those all up, I end up getting 258 
and 90 cents. Now, from there, we have to divide that by three for the three months. Um, going into the 25, the 8, the 9, that's going to end up giving us 86.3. And don't forget, we still have to add that 18 back on because that's the same every month. So if we add the 18 to this guy right here, we get 104.3, which is answer D. For number 27, they say that an airplane burns one gallon of fuel for every second. They say they're going for 13.5 hours and they want to know how much fuel would be used. That just means we have to convert this from hours to minutes and then to seconds. So here's how I'm going to do it. 13.5 times 60 is going to end up giving me from hours to minutes. Well, I'm just going to do 13.5 times 6, and that gives me 81. But because we do have the 0 here, we're just going to add another 0 here for 810. Now I'm going to multiply it by 60 again to go from minutes to seconds. Well, 81 times 6 is going to be 486. And then we still have these two zeros to consider, giving us this as a final answer, which is C. For 28, it says that land is selling for 60000 per acre, and he's buying one and three-fourths acre. Well, obviously the one means that he's spending 60000 but what about this three-fourths? Well, if I divide up 60000 in the fourths, that's 15000 each, because it would be 15, then 30, then 45, and then 60. Well, three of those would land us at that 45000 mark. So that means that I need to add the two of these together for my final answer, well, 60 plus 45 is going to give me 105, meaning our answer here is C. For 29, we're taking into consideration how much money Kyra is making. It says that Kyra makes this much in January, this much in March, and this much in April. Then it says that the company is willing to give a dime for every dollar she saves, up to a total of $10 per month. So we got to find now the total savings. Well, first off, let's find out how, how much she saved on her own. 60 plus 130 plus 70 is going to end up giving me 260. Now, how about how much her company is going to give her? Well, if it's a dime for every dollar, we can essentially just divide each one of these by 10 to get how much that would be. So it'd be six for January, 13 for March, but the max is 10, so that would be 10 for March, and 7 for April. So if I add those together, we get 23, meaning our final answer is these two combined, which is just going to be 283. Answer B. Now, the wording for number 30 makes this a little bit tricky. Jackie's paid $822.40 twice a month. It also says that she saves $150 per paycheck, so that is also twice a month, but only pays $84.71 once each month. So they want to know how much money is left to spend after these are taken out. So first off, let's subtract this from this guy because this goes for both paychecks. So $822.40 minus 150 is going to end up giving us $672.40. I am also going to multiply that by two now because we do get that amount of money twice a month. Once I multiply that by two, we get $1,344.80. Now we need to subtract that $84.71 from there, and that's going to give us our final answer of $1,260.09. Well, guys, that's all 10. I hope you found this content helpful, and I wish you the best of luck on your next attempt at the ASVAB. Remember, if you want to see more videos like this walking you through question by question, go ahead and check out my page, and make sure to hit the subscribe and like button so that you see more like this as they come out. Again, my name is Daniel Caproni, and I wish you best of luck on your next test.